Hi, this is Eric of Arn Software, and um, this tutorial, this beginner's tutorial, we will talk about a general tour over the interface of Fusion and how to set up your first composite. So, welcome to the show. This is basically how your Fusion interface probably looks when you start up Fusion for the first time. You will see five major areas. Your toolbar up here, which allows you to load, save, or create new compositions some buttons for your tools you can drag directly to the flow then your actual viewer where you view the output of your tools and of course the flow area the flow area is where basically all your magic happens where you connect your tools and set up the pipeline to determine how your footage should be treated the flow area itself has six tabs the flow itself then the console which gives feedback from the system or which allows you to test short lines of script. The timeline where you can modify keyframes. The spline editor. The information tab where you can leave comments for your fellow workers. And the chat tab for connecting to other software and exchanging comments. Down here you've got your time ruler your playback controls, your loop controls, audio high quality buttons, options to turn on or turn off motion blur, the proxy and the auto proxy mode. This is also where you set your global start time, your render start time, the render end time and the global end time. On the right side you see the controls area. This is where your tools and modifiers sit and where you can change the values of the individual controls. Let's build our first composite. In most cases you need to bring some sort of material into Fusion to create a composite. You can do that in various ways. One of the ways is to use Fusion's bins. The bins can be either accessed by clicking on the bin button or by hitting Control B. Well this brings up my bins. I already have three clips in here and if I right click on any of them and move my mouse cursor to the left and the right Fusion will open that clip in the main viewer and allows me to scroll through the image to get clips from the bins onto my flow area I simply drag and drop them to close the bins either hit Control B again or click on the bin icon the other way to bring clips into the flow area is to drag them directly from Explorer. So for example, I have a couple of folders here. So if I take my main folder here and drag it onto the flow, Fusion will create a loader. To view the output of any tool, just drag it into the view. The same technique could be used to add more items to the bins. So let's open the bins again. go here and for example let's take my mask folder and drag it into the bin and a new item is created let's close the bins again you could also drag multiple folders into fusion let's take these two just select them in explorer drag and drop them on the flow and fusion will automatically create not only two loaders but also a merge which merges these two images together. To flip the input of any tool, hit Ctrl W. To navigate in the flow or in the views, hold down the middle mouse button and move your mouse around to pan. Hold down the middle mouse button and the left mouse button and move your mouse to the left and to the right to zoom out or in respectively. Whenever any of your tools is outside of the actual flow area, a navigator window will pop up that allows you to navigate around and select the area of the flow you want to see. As you can see, that navigator will automatically go away when all the tools of your flow are visible in this area. Let's start with the first composite. Here in my bins, I have a clip called Garden Walk and I also have a clip called Table Text. Let's take these two, close the bins, and see what we can do with them. 
So apparently what we need to do is to integrate this clip with this clip. As you can see right now, my render start and render end time are both set to frame 1. If I take any tool, like for example a loader, and drag it onto Fusion's time ruler, Fusion will automatically set the render start and render end time to the extent of that tool. I can now play this clip back just by hitting the spacebar. While playing back, Fusion will actually cache the contents of that clip into RAM. You can tell that from the green line that builds up here in the time ruler. Once caching is complete, Fusion will play back the clip at the speed determined in the preference settings for this composition. In this case, it's 25 frames per second. Actually, this material has been shot at 30 frames per second. So what I want to do is I want to open my Preferences, which I can either do by clicking on File, Preferences, or by double-clicking on the cache display down here. I go to my composition, find Frame Format, and set it to 30 frames per second. Hit Save, hit Play again, and now you will see the clip plays at 30 frames per second. So this is my background plate and you will see that this actually has been undistorted which means I removed the lens distortion out of it. How that can be done I will cover in an upcoming tutorial. We want to integrate this foreground clip with our background clip. The easiest way to do that is to take the output of my foreground, drag it and let it go on the output of my background clip. Fusion will then automatically create a merge tool. To view it, I drag it into the view, and there we have our integrated elements. I could also add a merge manually, either by clicking on the merge button up here, and then connecting the output of my background to the merge's background input and the output of my foreground to the merge's foreground input. Another way to add tools if I don't feel comfortable with these buttons is to right click, say add tool, composite, merge and connect it. Or I could hit control space which brings up the add tool dialog and I simply type merge until the tool I want is highlighted and then hit return. By the way, if I connect tools together in Fusion, I don't have to actually aim for the background input. As long as nothing is connected, the first input that Fusion will connect automatically is the background, which means I drag my output from the loader and let it go anywhere on the merge tool and automatically the background will be connected. Same with the foreground. Now that the background is connected, I can let go anywhere on the tool and Fusion will automatically connect it to the foreground input. Let's get rid of these tools just by box selecting them and hitting delete. Whenever any tool is active, you will see its controls here in the control area. Well, there's one input on any tool in Fusion, which is blue. Blue is always the mask input. And as we can see here, we are desperately in need of a mask to mask our foreground element out. Lucky as I am, this mask has already been created. So I drag it from the bins, close the bins, and connect the mask, which looks like this, to the mask input of my merge. Well, apparently nothing happens. Why is that? Well, the mask itself has been saved as an 8-bit image, so it doesn't have its own alpha channel. It has, however, the full luminance I need to create a mask. So I open my merge, go to the Controls tab, and in the common controls, which are there for every tool in Fusion, I can choose the channel which should be used by the mask. Since I don't have an alpha channel, I click here and choose Luminance. 
And as you can see, Fusion now uses the luminance of this loader to mask out my foreground element on the merge. Actually, I could also use just the red channel, which delivers the same result. The next thing I need to add is a contact shadow here on my table to make this more believable. And again, I'm lucky because this shadow already has been created for me. So I drag it from the bins onto my flow, close the bins and connect the output of my shadow with the output of my first merge. And again, Fusion automatically creates a second merge, which I can then view here. Well, that doesn't look like a shadow, actually. And also, this needs to be downstream of my foreground element. What you can do in Fusion is you can just box select and holding down Shift, detach the tool from its original position and then reinsert it, still holding the Shift key, on another position. Well, apparently I have to change the mode my merge works in. I want to change it from the normal apply mode to multiply mode. So I multiply my shadow over the table. And again, apparently I need a mask, which is up here. So I just drag a second output from my original mask and pipe it into this merge. And again, in the common controls, I select the luminance channel. Now I can view my final merge, and this already looks a little bit better. However, I want to bring the blend of this first merge with the shadow down a bit. So I can either go to my common controls, where there's a blend slider on every tool in Fusion. And that means, whatever settings I have done in the tool itself, the blend slider brings the intensity of the entire tool down. So in this case, the transparency of my shadow. I also want to blur the shadow a bit. To do that, I just take a blur tool and this time I'm going to drag it from up here. Just let the mouse go on the pipe between the original loader and the merge. And then slightly blur my shadow, maybe by a value of 2. Go back to my merge, bring the blend up a little bit. And what you see here is the very moment I drag any slider in Fusion, Fusion switches to auto proxy mode. That means it uses a lower resolution of the original image to provide immediate feedback on whatever I'm doing. Sometimes you don't want that auto proxy behavior, so just switch it off. Go down here, switch off auto proxy, and then adjust your values to your liking. At the end of the day, you want to save your composite out. To do that, you need the opposite tool of a loader, which in Fusion is a saver. So either get your saver from up here, or from the tools menu, or from the bins in your tools, IO, saver, or by hitting control space, typing saver and hitting return. So let's call that garden out dot jpeg which will create a jpeg sequence for me to actually render your output you have to click on the render button a dialog comes up which in most cases you can just leave untouched because it will be set to final quality and you can just hit start render and watch fusion doing its job in the next tutorial i will show you how to refine this composite even further and of course where all these different layers came from in the beginning Hope you enjoyed Lesson 101. Stay tuned for more news from your favorite compositor.